Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the box trace for objects node. Let's run through our quick little example. Let's run through here and find our box trace for objects node. And this is going to be the result right here. Now actually if we run through it, it's going to be our second one over here. We can see it's colliding. We can actually see it's colliding against this back wall. Now you can't see the little hit because we're using a box trace. And I'll show you how and why that is in a second. So by default, our box trace is going to work just like our line trace, unless we fill in the half size and the orientation values. Now the box trace for objects is pretty much the same thing as our box trace by channel, except the objects looks at the object collision type rather than the visibility trace channel type. So let's go ahead and run through that example. Now, like I mentioned, because we haven't set up a value for a box size, it's going to look just like a line. Let's move our player over so we can see this as it happens. And this is our channel result right here. If we take our object and let's give it a box size of something around 20 in each direction and we hit play. I moved my character over too far. It's supposed to be here. There we go. Now you can see to the left of us, we have a little box being projected. And we can see here when it hits the wall, we can see the shape and size of our box. If we go all the way around at the end, which is our second one here, we can actually see our box shape itself. So far, this is the same as our by channel. The difference being the object version fires off based on our collision object types. If we go to edit project settings, collision, you will find your object channels, all of which are defined by default here. You have six object channels. Now by object channels, what I mean is if we were to look at our wall and go to collision and look at any of the presets, you have an object type. And it's going to be one of those six types we spoke about. In this case, our wall here is world static. Our cube here is going to be of type world dynamic. And then of course our player is going to be of type pawn. When we're in here, we have our objects type array. It's going to be holding in an array format any objects we want it to collide against. I've set this up to only collide against world static. If I wanted to also collide against the player, I could turn on pawn and hit play. Now we move over. You'll notice it's now hitting the player. And it's using that box to determine what it's hitting. Now here's something that is kind of cool. If I was to take and turn off the pawn and hit play and walk through here again, well, we'll notice nothing's happening. If I was to turn on world dynamic and hit play, you'll notice it's now stopped by my box here because like I showed you earlier, this cube here is set as world dynamic. But if I walk my player through it, well, we'll notice it's stopping as well. And why is that? Well, this little sphere on the front that I used to indicate the front orientation or the nose of my character, it is of type world dynamic. And this little cube I have on the back, this square, I'm using that to indicate where the sphere is on the front. So as you can see, this cube is actually crossing into our projection that we're trying to do here, our little box trace, and it's triggering when the sphere hits. So that is something to keep in mind. Something else to keep in mind, just like the normal box trace, if we made this much larger, let's say 50, and we hit play, the originating point will trigger when you overlap it. So you can see my nose is going inside my originating box. And as it attempts to sweep from the start to the end, it hits my nose and is immediately triggered. One thing that's useful about the box traces is it not only 
is useful if you want to have something other than a line. Maybe you want to have a volume. You can just basically use itself as the starting and ending point. Go out in the box and just see everything that's around you. One thing to keep in mind, make sure your starting and your ending point are not the same. If you just plug in your start and end point and fire it off, you'll notice I don't trigger. Your start and end point need to be different, even if it's slightly. In this case, I'm taking my starting point, adding a very small Z value and setting that as the end. Now when I run it, you'll notice it will trigger. And that's because even though this is a box trace and it's using a box to determine what it impacts with, it still has to trace, it still has to sweep, it has to have a starting and ending, even if it's very minor, in order to check everything that's inside of it. So if you have an issue, make sure you adjust that. All the other settings are going to be the same as our normal box trace for channel. Orientation determines the rotation of our box. Object types is our array, which holds which object types we're going to collide against. Trace complex is if it's a complex or simplified collision. Actors to ignore is an array of actors we may want to ignore, such as ourselves. We technically, you don't need that because of this, but maybe other players instead of the enemy. Debug type, of course, is our debugging. By default, it's set to none, and I turned it on so we could actually see our square. And then ignore self is what I talked about earlier. It'll ignore any of the collisions set to this blueprint, so that way it doesn't trigger on itself. One thing to keep in mind, if we were to take this and move it out of the way, I have some things hidden underneath this. If we were to pull up, let's say, any of these items and look at their collision, you notice these are set to block all, world static. Let's go ahead and change our Z to something like 400. Let's make sure our object type is set to static. And we go ahead and run it. Whoops. And turn our collision back on, our debug type. You'll notice that we'll, it's not colliding with anything. When it's not colliding with anything because there's no boxes inside of here. Let's go ahead and make this X back to 100 like that and hit play. And you notice now we're colliding with the things inside of it. If we pull out our hit result and we tell it to tell us the hit actor. And of course I need to print this. Print actor. Print string dot actor. That was silly. I tell it to hit something. Print the string. Tell me what it hit. And hit play. It's going to give me back cube 11. Go into our map, find cube 11, and it's going to be this bottom most cube. For whatever reason, the single traces tend to return back the farthest item when you do the trace. Because I'm doing a little bit in the Z direction, it's going to give me back the lowest or farthest away on my collision volume. If, for example, I was to move this one up, and hit play. Oh, let's try this again. Let's see. I think I'm only hitting. Let's see which ones am I hitting here. I don't think I pulled that one. Yeah, see, I didn't pull it up enough. I don't think. Like that. There we go. Yeah. Now we'll get back cube nine. Cube nine is more than likely going to be this one right above me. So if we were to check it out, we'll find that is cube nine. So it's going to return back, even though we have our volume is encompassing multiple returns, because we're using the single version, it's only going to return back the single farthest one. At least that seems to be my experience with this. So keep that in mind. If you want more than one result, make sure you use the multi version of the box traces. That is going to go ahead and wrap up the video for the box trace for objects node.